Here's where we start to learn that students aren't the best judge all the time at what's helping them learn. They're really good at knowing what feels good, what they like, but that's not always synonymous with deep learning. So as teachers, although it might not be comfortable all the time, we've got to be willing to press those hard buttons and say, look, I know you might not like this as much, but trust me, this is going to lead to deeper learning. It's not going to feel as comfortable, but this is where depth comes. Hello everybody and welcome to this week's From Theory to Practice where I take a look at the research so you don't have to. Now the article I've selected this week is called Effect of On-Screen Text on Multimedia Learning with Native and Foreign Accented Narration by Chan and colleagues. Now to understand what they did with this paper, there are two long-standing principles of multimedia learning we have to understand. So the first principle is called the redundancy effect. Put simply, the redundancy effect says that when narration is combined with identical on-screen captioning, learning and understanding drops. Now the reason for this concerns how the brain processes reading and listening. So when you're listening to a narrator, a very specific auditory linguistic area of the brain is used to process that voice. Interestingly, this exact same network is used to process silent reading. So just like you can't understand two people speaking at you at the same time, neither can you understand a narrator while trying to read simultaneously. There's just not enough room in the brain to handle this. Now the second principle we have to understand is called the voice effect. And this says that when the narrator has a foreign accent different than the viewer or listener, all of a sudden learning and understanding drops. And the reason for this has to do with decoding. Typically when listening to a foreign accent, a lot of cognitive energy is expended just trying to make sure you got the right words so you can basically follow the argument. Unfortunately, when all this energy is expended just on decoding the words, deeper understanding and conceptualization suffer because of that. Now, what did this paper do? What these authors did is they said, what would happen to learning and understanding if we pit the redundancy effect against the voice effect? When these two come together, what happens? So here's what they did. They had different groups of people watch a video lesson on the formation of lightning. And at the end of the video, they had to answer two different sets of questions. One we're gonna call surface retention questions. So these were just basic facts that they heard from the video. Things like, uh, how hot does lightning get? Now, the other questions are called deep retention questions. So these are questions that don't directly mirror things learned in the video, but that if you truly understood the concept, you should be able to answer. So for instance, which of these clouds is more likely to produce lightning? So in the first part of this experiment, they had three different groups of people watch this video when the narrator had the same accent they did. In the three different groups, group one just had the narrator, group two had some keywords peppered in, and group three had full simultaneous captioning. And what happens? As far as the surface retention is concerned, all three groups performed significantly the same. So everyone got the same basic facts from it. But once you move into deep retention, all of a sudden that pure narration group, the one with no text, is almost two times more likely to answer deep questions than either of the groups that had text. So boom, we just demonstrated the redundancy effect. Add text and learning starts to go down, cool. Now in part two of this study, these researchers had three different groups watch the same video, except this time the narrator had a foreign accent. In this case, they were using an Asian accent that was not native to the listeners. Same thing, we got three groups, pure narration, keywords, and full captioning, and what happens here? So it turns out with a foreign narrator, with no text or only keywords, surface retention drops significantly. But as soon as you add captioning full narration, surface retention rises to the same level as the people listening to a native accented speaker. So here we have evidence that adding captioning with a foreign narrator can actually serve to boost understanding and comprehension. But unfortunately, once you take a look at the deep retention, all three foreign accented groups are worse, so none of them performed as well as that pure narration without words over here. So cool, let's bring this back to us. What does this mean for us? If you're gonna be doing multimedia lesson, don't just automatically caption your videos or embed them in. Make captioning an option because our accent doesn't always match our students. So when we make closed captioning a choice, 
those students who match our accent can keep it off and do strong learning, and those students that struggle with our accent can have this boost. Now, the second thing we can draw from this is that this doesn't just matter on video learning. The same principle is gonna happen in real life. So anytime we're teaching, if we've got slides with text behind us, if we're giving handouts with text, we've gotta be very cognizant of how we're presenting information and when we're asking students to do the impossible. Now, there's one last bit to this research that I haven't told you about that I think is really interesting. So at the end of the study, they asked all the students to, to rate the different conditions. When did they think they were learning best? And almost to a student, every single one of them said that when captioning was on, they were learning more. They thought that was helping them make sense of material. They had no clue that it was hurting them. Here's where we start to learn that students aren't the best judge all the time at what's helping them learn. They're really good at knowing what feels good, what they like, but that's not always synonymous with deep learning. So as teachers, although it might not be comfortable all the time, we've gotta be willing to press those hard buttons and say, look, I know you might not like this as much, but trust me, this is going to lead to deeper learning. It's not gonna feel as comfortable, but this is where depth comes. And the more we can do that and show them the impact over time, ideally the more we can get them on board to recognizing these different principles of learning and embedding them in their own practice, taking agency over them. So that's it, this is a really good paper. I got a lot of cool ideas from it, hope you did too. Uh, so if you like what you heard, if you can give me a thumbs up and subscribe below, that'll make sure that we can get these videos out to more people on YouTube so we get the ideas out. And thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope you're all well and I will see you guys soon. Bye y'all.